Hi, it's Jean and it's Monday morning. So welcome to Stitch Talk. If it's about stitching, let's talk. Welcome everyone. We have some early birds again that were in the chat chatting away before we got started. Danielle, dear, dear daughter Danielle, of course, is here with us this morning. My awesome moderator also. And Vicki is here with us. Andrea is here. Judy Hebert is here. Uh, let me see if I've missed anyone. Debbie Williams is here. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Katie Crafts is here. Denise with So Patch 33 is here. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Yes, hope all is well with all of you. But good morning, good morning. And what are we going to be discussing this morning? We are going to be chatting about slow stitching this morning. And I am going to be starting a new, um, yeah, adding on to my snippet roll since I just finished Follow Your Heart. But that is what one of the things, of course, we'll be chatting about many, many things, but that is the project for this morning. Good morning, Carol. It is awesome to see you. And guess who, Nancy, who called me sweetheart. That was so cute. Uh, thank you, Nancy, is here also with us. And Gisela is here. Good morning, Gisela. It is great to see you. And Donna, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I always like when, when the moderators say hello because we notice that because their name lights up. And I'm like, I missed Donna. Donna Sweetman, you must be new, Donna. Welcome, welcome. It is great to see you. I hope you enjoy the channel. But okay, what is a snippet roll? A snippet roll is just a form of slow stitching that instead of um, having only one project on something. Oh, and I forgot I don't have this other camera on. So let me bring in our guest this morning, which is the slow stitching photo page that I will be working on. There we go, which um, I think you have seen me working on Follow Your Heart. What a snippet roll is, if I turn this over, you're going to see the back of the, the batting there, but it is a continuous piece that I will be adding on additional uh, sections to. And then you have something that you take. I will be using this old spindle. It's an antique wooden spindle, and I will be using it attaching it to it, and then you roll it up. That is a snippet roll. It is snippets of slow stitching projects. I hope that um, helped describe that for you, Gisela. Let me make sure I haven't missed anyone. Teresa is here. Good morning, Teresa. And Jim is here bright and early with us. Good morning, Jim. Great to see you. So, as I said, I did finish the follow your heart section on this. So, my next um, page that I am going to, not page, next section, because it's all in one, is I am going to be working with this favorite photo. My grandkids are older than this now. Not a lot, but they're older. But this is the favorite photo that I have of my two grandchildren, Jack and Jewel. And so I am going to do a page around this photo. And if you're wondering how I got this photo onto fabric, there is fabric that you can use or you can use your own um, fabric um, on a printer and just print the photo on that. And that is what I have done to have the photo for that. And I changed it to um, kind of a sepia tone instead of the true color that was in there. But that is what I will be working with. And of course, that's just what the theme is going to be for it. We are going to have to add things and fabric and embellishments and everything to that, of course. And you know, I always have everything set up 
Oops, we're too close. We're too close to that. But yeah, I have all my threads, a few of the embellishments, some of the fabrics that I'll be using. And of course, in case I forget <laughs> an embroidery stitch, I always have my little handy dandy uh, pocket embroidery book in there as well. One of the other things that I do use frequently and I wanted to share with you is sometimes there is something you cannot sew down. You have to um, glue it down. And this fabric fix is what I use when I do that. And so you see this little bow on her hair right there, which in the photo, she has a pink bow on her hair. I just happen to have that. And the shank part of that is not on there to be able to sew it on. So that needed to be glued down. And I did that before starting so that the glue would be dried and everything on there. So just a few steps to let you know on that. And I love that picture of Jack and Jewel. Yes, one of my one of my favorite one of the other favorites that I have of them is on the beach in Hawaii. But that's an awesome picture too. But thank you, uh, Debbie and Michelle's Crafts and More is here. Good morning to you. And Donna says she is lurking mostly today while I work. Shh, don't tell the boss. I never tell the bosses. Never, never. No worries there. And Kelly's Quilts and Cruises is here. Hello and good morning to my quilting and stitching friends. And yep, Danielle also, I never, I never tell her boss. The only thing I would do is call up and tell her boss to, you know, or anybody's bosses, yeah, they deserve a raise. Treat them better. Give them more time off. <laughs> and Andrea is also, which I did welcome Andrea in, in the beginning. She says, I did a wedding quilt for my daughter with printed fabric. When she, when she divorced him, she did not want it anymore, so I kept it. When washed, the photos faded away. LOM. I am glad I found out. Yeah, um, if you don't prepare it correctly and, and whatever, that can happen. I have done a lot. None of mine have washed off. <laughs> so I must be doing something, something correctly. But if when you print them um, and the paper that that I use... You actually set it in the water, let it dry, and then heat set it, and it does not fade or wash out. But it could have something to do with um, just, just what you used and what you printed it on. But yes, there are products out there now. It will not wash away. And Lori Clark is also here with us this morning. Welcome, welcome. And yeah. But then, of course, the other thing is most of, of the projects that I do with a printed photo, um, I do not, do not, uh, you know, normally wash. So now I know what I am going to do with all the photos I have. Yes, which I am, um, I am also going to make a little book of slow stitch projects that is all done with photos of family and things that have to do with family to have as a keepsake. I think that would be awesome to have instead of the, you know, your regular, you know, photo album sitting on the on the coffee table at home that everyone looks through. Wouldn't it be awesome to have one that is all slow stitching and embellished in your your favorite photos? But that that is my plan also for in the future. Okay. And um, as you see, I'm starting out with it blank here, but I want to be totally open with my process and how I do things, which, um, like I said, I always have everything that I'm using in this little, you know, in a little container of some kind, which I went through um, my scraps that I keep. I keep a, I have a big drawer that are all different sizes of scraps of fabric because I do a lot of applique. So you always need scraps for applique. In slow stitching, you will also find that you're able to use those scraps as well. So I went through and I found what I liked that I thought went well with the photo, trying to bring out, you know, what is actually in the photo and these are just the fabrics that I came up with and I also have a couple pieces of lace that I am going to be using with that project on her 
top of her dress. You, I don't think you can, there you can, you can probably tell, but is kind of lacy at the top. So this lace I thought was the closest that I had that was to the color that is in that and on the black it it will go well so so adding that to bring it out and of course we have to have a little bit of white because jack's shirt is is white and jules shoes are white and just to give you a little background on this photo um my son their father was in the air force he retired from the air force and this photo was taken when taken when they were getting ready to go to his celebration that they were having for him receiving chief master sergeant, which is the highest that you can get in enlisted in the Air Force. So they were going to that celebration. And that is why they're all dressed up and everything. So really cute photo. Um, and Kelly says, I got my sister to print photos of my sister-in-law's grandkids when I made her the bookcase quilt. Yes, those yeah, also works awesome for bookcase quilts. I haven't made one yet. That's on my list of things to do sometime. <laughs> yeah, I need to stop making that list. There's way too many things to do on that. <laughs> but Gisela has a question. If you use your own fabric to print on, don't you have to wash it before printing? Well, your fabric can be washed or not you don't really have to wash it it all depends upon whether you think the fabric is going to bleed or not if it's good fabric no i don't wash mine before printing on it you do have to apply freezer paper to the back of it so that it will go through your printer though <laughs> that is one thing you do have to do so no good fabric good you know quality fabric i do not pre-wash. Don't spend time pre-washing. Good morning, June Hansen. It is great to see you. And last, it's high contrast fabrics. If I'm using a red and a white, I will pre-wash that red. <laughs> Just saying on that. Don't want to take any chances there. But you need to hide that, la that list with your last whip. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, you know, that's never going to happen because we always are coming across new and different things that we want to give a try. And that's okay. I'm trying something new this, this morning and I'm noticing that it's not really working. If you ever notice, and nobody I know has, has ever said anything, but I notice on, you know, when I've played back a few that I never appear to be looking at you, the people that are watching me, because the camera is above where we see what's going on on the laptop. So if we don't look up like this, I hope that looks more like I'm looking at you. We aren't, you know, appearing to be talking to you, but talking to something off to the side or over or whatever. So I actually have my favorite picture of my mother that I taped up where I should be looking at to talk to you because I know that she is very proud of me and looking down at me and loves to share coffee with me and have a chat. She's no longer with us, but I do have coffee with my mom and talk to her every day. So I have her taped up trying to help remind me to look up so that it looks like I am talking to all of you instead of looking at myself down here and really talking to no one. <laughs> and Jim says, another great use for freezer paper. Yes. And good morning, Lorraine. It is great to see you also. Kona has, yes, they have prepared for dyeing fabric, which is good for printable pictures also which that is what I use a lot of. So, yeah. It's called PDF. P prepared. No, PFD. Yeah. PFD, not PDF. PFD. Prepared for dying. And you can find that. Um, I know you can find it at quilt shops. I don't don't know. I can't remember whether your Joann's and that type of place carries that or not. I've had had mine for a while and, and bought lots of yardage of it when I did purchase it. So I'm very guilty of that when I have a guest on hoping to redo my setup this week to correct that issue. Yeah, it's just hard to remember to look up there because then you can't see 
what is actually in the view. So you have to look down there once in a while to make sure what you're doing is in the view of the camera. <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, the prepared for dyeing fabric um has has been out for a long, long time. But in fact, some of the um printables that you can use, which this is an old one. And um it does have a paper backing on it. And I would say don't leave them sitting too long if you have those, because I really had a hard time getting the paper off the back of this one this morning after printing it. <laughs> but I've ordered it on Joanne's website. Okay, good to know, Katie. I don't use Joanne's much anymore, so I didn't know whether they whether they carried it or not. Okay, so what I was referring to and what I said that I am going to, you know, full disclosure, it will look like, you know, that, hey, I'm pretty quick at figuring out what, what I want to put on here. Well, I kind of laid things out previously to going on and doing this live, had a little, little plan for where I want my fabrics to go. So a tip and a trick that I'm going to share with you about that, and I'm sure that many of you already know, is once you do that, take a photo of it so you remember what you had in mind. So when you remove everything, you have that to refer back to so you can lay things out on what was in your mind and thinking about how you wanted things to go on that. <laughs> so we are going to start by taking this up off there. Oops, there's my little white piece of fabric hiding under there. And we are going to, and I have a little, you can barely see it, but I have a very light line drawn over here. That is where I know that I want this portion that I'm working on to end. And of course, it's going to line up with where we ended on the last one. So I'm going to start and I'm just looking at which which side of that. I think I want it to go this way, <laughs> just by the print that is left on that fabric. But I'm going to start by placing that one on there. And let me see. We've got the black one over there. And this little part of this is not sewn down yet. And I am going to make sure that that fabric is under there. So when I stitch, I am... Let me slide that over a little bit. You can't see that edge there. Yes, this part right here, I purposely left not stitched down tight so that my next section could be kind of slid under there and then that will connect those two together when I stitch that. But that piece is going there. And then we have Okay, something isn't on here correctly. <laughs> this piece needs to go this direction. There we go. That works. See, that's why you have your little your little cheat sheet down there. <laughs> and then I am adding this one up here. And again, I'm sliding that underneath that so it will all get stitched in together. Making sure that it comes to my edge there. And because this is hanging off, it's it's waiting a little bit. I'm going to stick a pin in there real quick because it's having a tendency to pull down because that's hanging. Oops. And of course, before I get my pin in, it slid on me again. But the weight of that is pulling that down off there. <laughs> There we go. Now it's going to line up where I want it to. But so I'm just kind of making a a patchwork out of that. And I'm adding that little piece on there. We're going to add our photo back where we want it. And if you notice, the angle that I, I put it this way instead of the other way is because Jack is leaning that way. So to make it look better, slanting it this way makes it 
to the eye look better than if I had slanted the picture the other way. So that is going on there. This lace is going to go right across the top up here. Slide that under also. Let me make sure I'm not, not missing anything. You are so welcome, Lorraine. And oh, I'm that's Gisela that said, Jean, thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> and Tracy is here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. See the pink waving hand there. What I was thinking of, says Gisela, is that the fabric is treated with chemicals before shipping in order to transport it by boat. Yeah, most of my most of my fabric is quilt shop, you know, quality fabric. And I I have never had I have never had a problem. So I just do not waste my time fooling around with pre-washing the fabrics. And of course, anything that I do when I do wash a quilt, I always put the fabric catchers in it. So, so far I have been lucky and I have not, not had a problem. Good morning, so Terry. It's great to see you, my other moderator. And Joyce is here. Good morning to you. Yes, on Amazon. Yes, I'm sure that they do have it. Um, yeah, mine, I probably, oh, I... I yeah, I bought bought several yards a few years back. So and I bought that when I was at oh one of the quilt shows. Um it was one of the semi-major ones. It was in Cincinnati, Ohio, that I bought from a quilt shop there that had it. And I bought a lot of yardage. So I haven't gone through it all yet. I'm sure someday I will and will need more, but at this point in time I don't. And because I do a lot of slow stitching and stuff, I don't use as much as I used to. But once I start doing the um, the little uh, fabric book of photos, I'm sure sure I will use a lot more. Danielle wants to know if So Terry has an email address. I'm sure she doesn't. No, I'm sure she does. <laughs> just just joking. But uh, okay. And Sheila Gage is here also this morning. She is doing laundry. Sheila just got back from a nice little trip, a quilt retreat, and she was in my neck of the woods. However, I wasn't able to go and see her in Amish country here in Ohio. So welcome, Sheila. It is great to see you. Uh, that's a bad word, laundry. Yeah. <laughs> And there, she put it right in the chat for you, Danielle. So there is Terry's email for you. So I have this laid out the way that I want it for this page. Except it looks like I want to move this photo over just, just a little bit, I think. Had it over just a little too far. So the next thing that I am going to do, and I might as well leave those off for now, is I am going to just pin everything down in place so that I will be able to tack it down. So we're just going to put a pin through every piece that is on here. Scoop that out of the way for right now also. And this, that, like I said, is, is the weight of that is pulling down on there. <laughs> Making it appear like it doesn't fit and isn't going under there right, but it is. And I'm putting my pins away from the edges. I'll put another one in there to hold that up where that does belong. Doesn't want to stay there. There we go. That should hold it. And we're going to go ahead and put one down here also while we're at it. 
That's an awkward way to put a pin in. There we go. And make sure that I have that on the edge correctly there. And we need to put our little white, which this is actually um, grunge. It has a little bit of gray and white in that fabric. And that slipped out on me, but when I stitch it, I will make sure that it is under there. Just temporarily putting everything down now until we can start stitching on it. And I don't want that to end up with a pin behind my photo, so I'm going to move that off to the side there. And now add my photo back in. And we will pin that down also. There we go. No skin was stabbed in the process of that. I went under her hand instead of through it. <laughs> Just in case. And call her and say, hmm, did you feel something sharp in your hand today? <laughs> but so everything is now tacked down on there and I can baste or I can uh, do some of the decorative stitching on to mark those down. But what I like to do is at least go around the edges at first and that is what I will be doing. Good to know. Thank you. Okay, can't remember what yeah. <laughs> that probably referred to to the the washing and and things like that. But and I know that these go up here. I'm not going to put those on right now because I am going to do the stitching that goes under that before those go on. And for those of you that always ask about the thread and the threads that I use, Kelly says she better get back. To it, time to fluff up the pillows in the dryer. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, Kelly. Oh, and if you're still on here and here, I hope that you have a great time on your camping excursion. Love camping. And Terry says probably missed the update, but how are the kiddos, aka puppies? They are awesome. Um, Stitches is still recovering recuperating not recovering <laughs> recuperating from being spayed uh just last week so she's not quite over that yet but i am i am laying these threads up here just to give you an idea that i do use a variety variety of types of thread i will pull whatever it is that i have in my thread arsenal to go with the colors and uh, whatever it is that I want to do on my stitching. So you don't have to be tied down to any certain type of thread. Whatever you have is what you can use in slow stitching and most embroidery. I use a lot of Valdani Pearl Cotton. This one is actually a DMC Pearl Cotton, but, and this is a size yeah, this is a size eight, which is a thicker one. The other ones that I have, we have one down here. That is a size 12, which is thinner. I have, um, and what is this? This is a sulky thread that um, have, for some reason, it is a 12 weight cotton petite. Uh, and then I have the regular DMC floss. So yes, I use a variety of different threads. Just so you know, because I know that question always comes up. What is my favorite? My favorite is the Valdani Pearl Cotton, but I will use everything and anything that I have. Is she in the cone of shame? No, she is not. And Whip, when he gets um, fixed, will not either because our vet um, has as an option, which of course 
is an additional cost, but they have a onesie. It is a medical onesie that they use that you can have instead of a cone. And they wear that and it keeps them from being able to get at their incision or whatever it is to lick and bother. So she has not had to be in a cone and it unsnaps. You can then pull it up, snap it together, you know, with their little front legs, you know, sticking out so that it's out of the way when you take them out to go to the bathroom. That is a photo printed on fabric. Yes, but I will remove these out of the way. I just wanted to do that, that little discussion about thread and that I will use whatever I have, whatever I find. When I am out and about, if I'm, I hardly ever go to a yard sale anymore, but if I do and I find threads of any kind, laces of any kind, anything like that, I always pick that up. And even if they are old, I will give them a, a strength test to see if they're still good. If you can pull on it and it doesn't break, it's still good to use. So some of the older ones you might want to put in a boil bath of your um, DMC and that type of thing because they didn't used to be color fast. So if you think it's old, just go ahead, boil some water, drop it in and then you won't have to worry about it running or anything on your projects. Mama, we need a picture of her in her onesie. I will try to remember to do that. I think I probably took one the other day when they were out here together. She's probably, probably in it. You can't really see it because it blends into the color of her fur. And so I don't know how well it will show up, but, but yeah, it's, it's cute. And I have had to wash it. <laughs> of course, I think somebody may have taken her out and forgot to, you know, move it up out of the way or something like that, or didn't get her taken out in time. <laughs> Could be also, but yeah. So it has also been washed in the meantime. But okay. It's time to take my sister to the doctor. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Goodbye, June. You're probably already gone, but I just saw that. Thank you for popping on while you were here. And Gisela has to go have dinner. Yes, can't go without eating. My sweet little sissy. Yes, she, yeah, she's sweet, but boy, can she be the the instigator on causing trouble. She seems so sweet and innocent and she's the little, okay, let me see what kind of trouble I can cause. But I have to get that notification that just popped up there out of the way. So I am going to, and I forgot ahead of time, but I am going to stitch around the outer part of that real quick with the black DMC floss. And you notice I never take farther than from the end of my arm to my shoulder. It should be, you know, my opposite shoulder. It should be when you are doing embroidery, but I'm not. I'm going to be basting from your hand to your elbow is about the length that you want so it doesn't tangle and everything on you. But for the basting, I'm going to make it a little bit longer just so that I don't have to redo get this divided here so we have that out and ready to go i made those infant onesie but modified for my puppers when they were fixed yes and where the snaps are and are located it does have room for their tail to to not be included in there so that works out very well also but yeah it's really 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 much much better than them having to be in that cone of shame <laughs> As Terry put it, but, and I know that I have a needle back behind here on my needle minder. Of course, it's right above my needle minder, but that's all right. It was so I knew which one I was, was wanting to use, which it really doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter, but. Okay, here we are, live again, trying to thread a needle. And 
there we go. Didn't have to wrestle with it this time. <laughs> we got it. Okay. So what is everyone else working on this week or today? Or what are your plans for, for working on? Hello, Deb S. the Pug Mama Quilter, which her little pug is still a puppy, too. And Teresa Louise, I quilt, too, is with us this morning. Awesome to see you, Teresa. Thank you. It's early in Teresa's neck of the woods. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over to take the weight off there that, as you see, keeps pulling this out from underneath there. And I am going to stitch that first so I don't have to worry about that anymore. So I'm going to get that back underneath there, which, of course, now it's pulling the other way. I am going to take, well, and I don't want the black on top of that. So we are going to just quickly start from the back. Put a stitch through that. And like I said, this is just basting this in place right now. So it doesn't matter what your stitches look like. Just getting it stitched down on there. And that is going to keep that in place. My trifocals are not kicking in here at this angle this morning. And my light source is not in the correct place because we have this, you know, camera. It, well, it's not a camera. It's actually my um, tablet. Kind of in the way of being able to have light over that. There is a light on my lap app, but if I turn that on, it's going to make a glare for you. So it is not on. So this part goes very quickly. Just stitching a running stitch all the way around there to hold the outer part portions of this fabric on there first. And we'll move that over. Making sure I don't miss anything, just some some comments with everyone saying hello to everyone going on. And Andrea, I did want to say to you, thank you. I did see your your exclamation, your explanation when you first came in the chat earlier this morning. And I, I thank you for that. I did notice and was a little worried. So very, very happy to see that you are still with the stitching friends. It's funny, they don't really give us a notification. Oh, that type of stuff, we have to go in and, and check periodically to check up on that type of thing. But Andrea, that's just a little, just a little sidebar as a lawyer would call it with Andrea, just, just some housekeeping with her, letting her know that I caught that. No need to put any comment about that in, in the chat, Andrea, just letting you know, I understand now what's going on with that. And that's so beautiful. Well, it's not beautiful yet, but it's getting there, Danielle. Thank you. <laughs> but, and Andrea says, I am working on filling out my weekly planner for the week. So far today, I have Jean and Mona. Is anyone else live today? I like that you have a different kind of planner than I have. Well, I have several planners, but 
I should have one for for when people go live. And you notice this excess here, that is the rest of what will be the snippet roll. I have that backing fabric pinned out of the way so that I don't mistakenly stitch through any of that. And it is safety pinned up and out of the way, but it does add a little weight. I have to move that out of the way occasionally when working on it. But now we are just going down this edge to quickly get this all so it won't be going anywhere while trying to do our decorative stitching on it. Making sure that it is all staying flat in place where I do want it though. I had to look for a minute there. I thought this fabric was was used on the portrait quilt of my of my mom that hangs up behind me, but it's not. I think it is one that that I was thinking of using and then changed my mind. But looked familiar there for a minute. And Andrea says she is going to be getting new hearing aids soon, and I may have to drop all my memberships in order to make payments, but I will hang on as long as I can. Hey, we, we totally understand, Andrea. I wish my, I wish my hubby would get hearing aids. <laughs> or maybe he thinks I need them. I don't know. <laughs> but, okay. Now we're going to flip this around the other way so I can go across the bottom of that. that up out of the way. So the only thing that this is being stitched to right now is the batting. The backing fabric, we don't add until everything is done because that makes sure we don't see any of our stitching. It's all hidden in between the layers. Well, we'll see the beautiful decorative stitching on the top, but we don't we don't want to see that on the back. Yes, it is awesome about being able to get new ones. I know my my dad had hearing aids and he was was always getting new ones or you know, batteries. A lot a lot goes goes into that. I know I've been been considering maybe doing a little little something different when it comes to memberships. Anyway, just just thinking about it right now, but I need to make the decision soon. And so those of you that are members, stay tuned. You might be getting might be getting some information on some changes on that. And again, that weight is pulling that down. I'm going to stop right there because I want to make sure. Oops. Bring it here. Hopefully that'll take the weight off both of those edges now. And I can get that so I know that it is underneath there, which this one is still pulling. Pulling that way. Once I get to the actual stitching of that, there shouldn't be. I was going to stick that pin in my mouth. That's a no-no. That's kind of a habit. I think we all do that from time to time. And Mona is here. If I didn't say hello to you sooner, I don't remember. Um, I just saw somebody. Melody is here. Good morning, Melody. It is great to see you also. Mona did what? Your phone was like, nope, no texting during Jean. <laughs> yes, I have it on. I have it on do not disturb. So it does does not does not come through. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I have to do that. Too many, you know, phone calls and notifications and everything that go off on it. So I always have my phone on do not disturb. However, I do have it set that if my husband needs to call, that call still gets through. But haven't worked on a project today. Your channel has kept me company while I've been housebound since a fall, December 30th. Oh, no, Mary. Recovery from a surgery to reattach the quadricep tendon is very slow. Yes, I'm sure it it is. Well, I'm glad that I was able to keep you company along with several other channels, I am sure, because I've seen you in the quilting community out there in other chats. But yes, I hope that you are getting closer and closer to a full recovery. Of course, we never recover fully, but, you know, as, as well as it is going to be. My brother has two cochlear implants after 25 years of being deaf. Big adjustment, but he is now enjoying hearing again. Awesome. That is awesome, Terry. So glad that he was able to get those. And it's time for Joyce's walk. Have a good day, everyone. You have an awesome walk, and I hope it's beautiful, a beautiful, lovely day to take your walk in. And Yes, Mona will be going live after I am done, and you have her on the planner, okay? And oh boy, that chat is just keeps going so a what got swatted on the weekend? I'm not sure what exactly the I. I know it's just a, a typo, but I can't figure that typo out. Usually I'm pretty good at that, but I can't figure that one out, Vicki. <laughs> something, hey, something got swatted on the weekend. <laughs> but I'm not sure what that is. Oh. And I I got I got a kick out of a couple of your comments in the the early bird comments there, Vicky. <laughs> And of course, those are ones that, yeah, I I would would not have read quite exactly as they were out loud because you know YouTube gets funny about some things, so we make sure we don't say those that we don't say them out loud. <laughs> okay. And this is a very awkward position right now to stitch this in. <laughs> Trying to get my hand underneath there. But we are getting that. So at least you got to see the very, very beginning process of a slow stitch project. And how it, how it all begins. Can't show you in my mind how the thinking process works, but, <laughs> oh, I don't think you'd want to be inside my mind, any of you. That, that could be a, a scary place at times. <laughs> oh. I believe Mona is going live at one o'clock Eastern time today. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mona. I believe that is what she has, has posted. Okay. And I think I am back. To my beginning there. Look at that. Just, just enough thread to finish because I started on this corner and to go back. Uh, and I picked up one of my needles off my needle minder there while I was stitching. Go back here and put a knot in that. That, that was great planning on the length of the thread there. Made it all the way around. Awesome. I need to check check the time there. 
And I love that there's a little magnet down on the bottom base of this lap app to keep the scissors, always know where they are. Very convenient. So, oops, that caught on the arm of my chair. So now all of those fabrics behind there are basted down. Nothing is going to fall off, except for that one is not basted down yet. And that would be, that one I would probably go ahead and do my decorative stitching on to add it on. It doesn't make any sense to go around and then do a decorative stitch. So that is is how I will do that one. I'm going to... And I'm going to stick my needle in there to remind me that that is not stitched down yet. So there we have the beginning of that process. <laughs> I like that it is scheduled. If today is 422, it is 422 Monday in the year of 2024. <laughs> the year of the dragon, I do believe. <laughs> Too much information, I know. Yes, I won at hand stitching thread chicken. Isn't that awesome? I love when that happens. I uh yeah, it's on the it's on the homepage of, of YouTube. <gasps> but I I do believe I have been, yeah, I've been seeing that the dates pop up on that. But she has it's, it has her schedule quite far out always on on what is coming up on Mona did what I like that always able to to see what's what's happening. But because we are so close to uh, twelve o'clock, I am going to stop there. I'm not going to do any additional sewing on that at this time. But but. Yeah, so that's going to be just goes from one, which I just kind of thought follow your heart will be kind of the theme of this one. It'll have things done on the rest of the snippet roll that are things that are close to my heart. And of course, my grandchildren are always close to my heart. So they are front and center on that page. Uh, no, let me think about my schedule coming up. Next will be, of course, Wednesdays live at three o'clock in the afternoon. It is, it's tip demo time. And that this week is going to be a demonstration on how I do needle turn applique. There are many ways of doing needle turn applique. I will be showing one of the methods. I don't normally use freezer paper, but because it is for those that have been asking about uh, showing how to do the applique for our project Peaceful Garden that has applique in the center of it and embroidery work and quilting all in one, I have decided to include that as this Wednesday's demonstration of the week. So that is what that will be. And then, of course, I always go live on Friday morning at the same time as Monday, 11 o'clock, same station, same time for Stitch Tips and Chat. And on Fridays, I do machine work, something that has to do with quilting or sewing using the machine or, yeah, Hand stitching projects are done on Monday. And then, of course, every Sunday afternoon, whenever I get around to it, I record my week in review. And so that is what you have to look forward to on my channel coming up. And that is weird. It's not in my live list, but I went to your channel and see it. Yeah, sometimes we, I, yeah, have to check, check both places, but. It disappears on stream. I think it was put in at 10 instead of 1. I saw it as 1, Mona. But, and Vicky says, I'll tell you about it on Facebook, Jean. I must have missed something you said, Vicky. I'm sorry. J.A. Crocheter. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. 
How about how about tell me in a private message? Let's not do that on Facebook. If you can do that, Vicki, private message me and let me know what you're talking about there. Okay. And thank you, Teresa. I think that's a reminder to, yep, hit that thumbs up, everybody, before you say goodbye and leave. It would be very much appreciated. It does help push our um our, our videos and stuff out. Uh, YouTube, you know, has their way of doing things and that definitely does help. And going in and leaving a comment, just saying hello, just giving a like, hitting that heart, whatever, that also helps very much. And if you are so inclined, sharing the video out to um, so that others that may not be aware, but maybe in your community or your, you know, your little uh, Facebook, YouTube part of the world that may find something interesting on some of the other channels that you watch too. So always, every once in a while, sharing out one of the videos really helps as well. Goodbye, Vicki. I will look for a message from you in Facebook Messenger. And we will see what it is that you were talking about. Take care, everyone. Yes, it is. I will give you a chance to say goodbye to everyone. And I will see you all very soon again. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Have a great day. And I hope if you haven't tried slow stitching yet, that you will give it a try because I know you will find it very enjoyable unless you do not like hand stitching at all. Then you might have a problem, but it is a great, great therapy, stress reliever, just something to sit back and mindlessly stitch. There is no pattern. There is no rhyme. There is no reason. You just decide what you want to do and you do it. See you soon too, Terry. Great. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great week. I will see you later in the week. I hope many of you and remember as always, in the meantime, I can keep you in stitches. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>